imbecile. And I think you're an imbecile. And I say you're an imbecile. Now, just a minute, boys. What's all the arguing now, about? Now, you keep out of this, Niles. It's just between us imbeciles. <laughs> How do you expect to get along with people? How do you expect anyone to like you? Oh, I'm a bad boy! <laughs> You certainly are. Mrs. Niles will be uh, here any second. And just watch what you say. Try to be decent for once. Okay, Abbott. Now, hey, quiet. Here she comes. Oh, how did that remark, Costello? I didn't say anything, Mrs. Niles. No, that's I, right. I that's didn't right. say anything. Costello I'm isn't going to be so nice. Absolutely, Mrs. Niles. He's not going to insult you. He's going to be a good boy, aren't you, Lou? Yes, Mr. Abbott. See that? Gee, Mrs. Niles, I sure am glad to see you. And by the by, can this be me talking? <laughs> Did you ever collect the insurance for the accident you had? Well, I didn't have an accident. Don't tell me you were born with that face. <laughs> no. What did I say? All right, Abbott, I'm sorry. Go ahead, wash my mouth out with soap. I said a bad thing. I'm a cat. I'm even lower than a cat. I'm an old Chevrolet. <laughs> oh, you know, Costello, I had a dream last night. I, uh, I dreamed we were holding a contest to see which comedian had the most empty space in his head. So? Well, one comedian had two square inches of space, another had five square inches, and another had ten square inches of empty space in his head. I'll bet you to see my head there. See it? That's why they were holding the contest. <laughs> told him all that time, darling. Oh, you're so refreshing. You're my little grapefruit. Oh, no, dear. You're my little grapefruit. Oh, but you're my little grapefruit. Oh, I insist, dear. You're my little grapefruit. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard from a couple of old squirts. There you are. Now you've done it again, Costello. Now the only way you can square things is to buy a farewell present or a gift for the entire cast. Abbott, don't talk so loud. That's what you like to do. I did that very thing this morning, Abbott. I bought farewell presents for everybody on the show. I got some dandy presents in a department store. So why are you talking so low? Quiet. I bought them in a the basement. Oh. <laughs> Stop whispering, Costello. What kind of presents did you get? I got a big box of candy for the boys in the band. Yes. And Connie Haynes and Mr. and Mrs. Niles and everybody. Just look at it. Abbott, isn't that fine-looking candy? For heaven's sakes. I've never seen such big pieces of candy. What are they? Chocolate-covered bananas. <laughs> You dummy. I should have known better than to trust you to buy presents for the cast. Now we're in a fine pickle. Where are we going to buy anything at this late hour? I, oh, come in. Come in. I, I aren't so grandy. I always come in handy. Woo, <laughs> Well, look who it is, Costello. Our old friend Kitzel, the salesman. Who could be, yes. Well, well, how do you do, Mr. Costello? I haven't seen you in a long distance. Please, me. <laughs> Hoo -hoo, you're just the man I'm looking at. And you're just the guy I'm looking at, Kitsu. You know, you showed me an electric razor two weeks ago, and it's no good. Oh, pish posh, no good. Oh, yes. pish posh, it's no good. Well, for your information, my little man, that was not an electric razor. That was a riveting machine. <laughs> Machine. Yes, yes. No wonder every time I shave it hammers my whiskers in and I have to bite them off with my teeth. <laughs> Never mind that, Costello. Uh, look, have you got anything to tell us today, Mr. Kitzel? Have I got anything to say? Yes. Boy, boy, now you're talking my language, if that's possible. <laughs> Why, I've got here... Uh, um, he's uh, lost, he's no, lost. No, 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 today I'm in the mansion business. <laughs> I'm in the mansion business. The mansion business? Yes, anything you mention, I got it. Oh. <laughs> I got a beautiful line of musical instruments. I got trombone, saxophone, a violin, a trumpet. Uh, wait a minute, have you got a pipe? Yes, and a couple of keys. Uh, no. Oh, you don't understand. A pipe is a long, skinny thing. Yes, yes, that's my fair idea. Oh, uh, wait a minute, Ketu. Yes. We don't want no musical instruments. Uh, what else have you got in your sample case? Uh, wait a minute. Have you got a potato clock? A potato clock? Mm -hmm. Doesn't he talk at peculiar angles? Yeah, yeah. Costello, don't be silly. What, what in heaven's name is a potato clock? Well, you wind it up when you go to bed and it gets you up potato clock. Who <laughs> 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 you up potato clock? Again, huh? Oh, boy, Costello. 
I don't like her. <laughs> oh, excuse me, my line. Come on, come, come, Kizzo. Open that sample case and get out those presents. Now, just a second. Oh, stop, Captain. Don't push me. What am I, a baby carrot? Look, Mr. Kizzo, yes. we have no time for foolishness. What have you got to sell us, Dr. What have I got to sell you? Yeah. Why, in this little satchel, I got gold rings, old rings, earrings, hair rings, cuff rings, stud rings, golf rings, and bobble rings, sports shoes, suede shoes, great shoes, and ulti shoes, clock, stock, socks, and smock. <laughs> Not to mention. Check suits, swim suits, blue suits, the ears, suits, hot coats, sport coats, overcoats, and any coats, sport ties, silk ties, home ties, and rail ties, quirks, shirts, assorted, nerfs, and a chilly night between the two. Good news spreads fast, and it's good news that the Star Theater, featuring singer Gordon McRae, songstress Evelyn Knight, and Victor Young's orchestra, is on the air every Wednesday night over most of these same ABC stations. And what a combination of tip-top talent that means. A lilting 30 minutes of melody. Gordon McRae is a man who has a special way with a song, and he'll be singing the most popular songs of the day. Evelyn Knight, the last with a delicate air, also has a special way with a song, especially with a folk ballad. But that's not all. Victor Young's orchestra, the Jeff Alexander Chorus, are also on hand each Wednesday night to add to the entertainment. So for a gale of time, plan to join us when the Star Theater, featuring Gordon McRae, Evelyn Knight, Victor Young's orchestra, and the Jeff Alexander Chorus, is heard every Wednesday night. And that means tonight over most of these same ABC stations. Suppose you walk into a baseball park. What teams are playing? I don't know. Then what are you doing in the baseball park? Ah, oh, you got me in there, now get me out. All right, all right, look here. Wait, what is the first thing you buy when you enter a baseball park? A hot dog. A hot dog? Without mustard. Oh, no, mustard goes with a hot dog. Not with mine. Mustard was, goes with a hot dog. It's I don't nothing. care what the mustard goes with, I'm not going to eat it. I don't like it. I mean, after all, Wait who a minute. You? Just a minute, I don't get excited. The mustard and the hot dog go together. Let them go together. I don't want to spoil any romance. Who's talking about a romance? I mean, after all, if I don't like mustard, I don't have to eat a few or anybody else. All right, I didn't know anything. What do you think you are, big man? If you Let's... come and eat mustard, I got to eat mustard. Well, let's forget about it. I got my likes and dislikes. All right, all right, we'll forget about it. I'm not going to eat mustard for you or anybody else. All right, so you don't have to eat it. I mean, after all, mustard burns my tongue, and I'm not going to burn my tongue for you or nobody else. All right, don't eat it. It's a free country. I know that. If you want to eat mustard, you eat it. If you don't, you don't have to. All right, well, don't shout. There's no law to you guys. No, 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 I know that. I know that. Mustard makes me sick. All right, all right, all right. Who do you think you want to tell me I got to eat something that I don't want to eat? Please, I'm, I'm a not... married man. I, I got a wife and two children. I understand that. If I eat mustard, I get sick. I can't work. What Wait happens a... to my kids? Just a minute. They wind up in the orphanage. Oh, You're a fine guy, son of my kids. Now, take it easy. Time. Don't get excited. Lowe. What do my kids ever do Nothing to you? All. all right, you got to put them away in the orphanage. Come on. Get my kids out of the orphanage. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> what started all this nonsense? Mustard. Mustard. Wait a minute. Just a minute. You just don't like mustard. I like the Worcestershire Shire Shire Shire. You like what? Worcestershire Shire Shire Shire. Worcestershire Shire Shire Shire. You can't even say it. Yeah, but you don't like mustard. I love Worcestershire Shire Shire Shire. Look, suppose you walk out on the bridge and you jump off. I'm ahead. not jumping off any bridge. Now what are you doing on the bridge? There's you two see? two things I don't like, and it's bridges and mustard. And if you want to burn me up, brother, all you got to do is stick me in the middle of a bridge with a handful of mustard. Now, wait a minute. Just a minute. <laughs> you don't like mustard. Give me a reason. What are you, some big shot or something? Too big a guy to like mustard? I don't care for that Wait. stuff. I'm not going to do that. Do you know where mustard comes from? Huh? You know where mustard comes from? I know they don't scrape it off a mustard plant. No, no, no. <laughs> they manufacture mustard. Do you know they spend millions of dollars every year to put up factories just to manufacture mustard? Oh, yeah. Do you know those factories employ thousands and thousands of men just to manufacture mustard? Oh, yeah. And you, just because you don't like mustard, what do you want them to do? Close those factories down and put all those people out of work? Now, just... Don't shout at me. Do you mean to stand there and tell me that those thousands of people are making one little jar of mustard just for no, me? No, 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 wait a minute. Let me... If they are, you can tell them not to make any more because I'm not going to eat All right, well, let's forget it. <laughs> if I eat that little jar of mustard that those thousands of people are making for me in a mustard factory, what happens to the poor people working in a witcher charge here, George? Wait a minute. Just a minute. <laughs> let's close one factory at a time. Take all the people I put out of work in a mustard factory and put them back to work on that bridge and build it up again. Now, wait a minute. Look, answer you... one question, will you please? Just one teeny-weeny question. Ask me something with a little sense to it. Will you answer it? Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right, say you walk into a restaurant. You walk into a restaurant, and the waiter places on uh, one side of the table uh, a, a, a big, juicy steak, and one side a platter of beans. Now, which one would you eat? I eat the steak. 
So you eat the steak. You yes. know where that steak comes from? A cow. A cow. I hope. You hope. You know what that cow gives? No. That cow gives milk. No, she don't. You gotta take it away from ah, yeah. <laughs> There may be a housing shortage, but tonight, there may not be for some contestants on Go for the House. This is the exciting show heard every Wednesday night over most ABC stations on which contestants can win a beautiful new honeymoon house built on a suburban lot right in their own hometown. Each Wednesday night, MC John Reed King calls seven couples to the ABC microphone. These couples each select to a room of honeymoon house to furnish and are given seven questions to answer. As they answer each question correctly, a prize of some home furnishing goes into the house. After the third question, they can take their prizes or go for the house. But to win the house, they must answer the special seventh question. Listeners also have an opportunity to win Honeymoon House. For complete details, don't miss Go for the House on the air tonight and every Wednesday night over most of these very same ABC stations. And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello show. Where are you going? Well, as you know, I have a baseball team. By the way, Costello, why don't you come along and play on the team? You mean it? Sure, why not? That's a good idea, Rabbit. But I don't think I know any of the players. I mean, after all, you see, some of these guys on the team I'd like to know. Well, I'll... If I'm going to join your team, here we go. Well, I'll introduce... Hello, oh, Rabbit. What I'd like to know is this here. I'll introduce I'll... the boys to you. Suppose it's that. You tell me who's playing on your team. You know, strangers may seem to give these ball players nowadays very peculiar names. You know, like Dizzy Dean and his Daffy, brother, his brother Daffy? Daffy Dean. I'm your cousin. Who are you? Goofy. Goofy, eh? Yep. Well, now, let's see. We have on the bag. We have who's on first, what's on second. I don't know who's on third. That's what I want to find out. I, I say who's on first, what's on second. I don't know who's on third. Are you the fellow that knows all the players? I certainly. Well, then who's on first? Yes. I mean, the fellow's name. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first baseman. Who? The guy playing first. Who is on first? Now, what are you asking me for? <laughs> I'm not asking you. I'm telling you who is on first. I'm asking you who's on first. That's the man's name. That's whose name? Yes. Well, go ahead and tell me. Who? The guy on first. Who? The first baseman. Who is on first? Have you got a contract with the first baseman? Absolutely. Who signed the contract? Well, naturally. <laughs> it's no good unless he signs it. It's no good unless who signs it? No. So who signed it? Absolutely. <laughs> When you pay off the first baseman every month, who gets the money? Every dollar. <laughs> well, why not? The, man, the man's entitled to it. Who is? Yes. So who gets it? Absolutely. Sometimes his wife comes down and collects it. Whose wife? Yes. <laughs> All I'm trying to find out is what's the guy's name on first base? Oh, no. Wait a minute. Don't twitch him. Don't twitch him around. What is on second base? I'm not asking. You know who's on second? Who is on first? I don't know. He's on third. Now, we're not talking. <laughs> Let's get this thing straight. Now, how did I get a third base? You mentioned his name. If I mentioned a third baseman's name, who did I say is playing third? No, who's playing first? Never mind first. I want to know what's the guy's name on third. No, what's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. He's on third. Here I go. Well, I can't shake that name. Will you please stay on third base and don't go off it? What is it you now, want? Third base. Now, why do you insist on putting who on third base? Now, who am I putting over there? Yes, but we don't want him there. What's the guy's name belongs on no, third? What belongs on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who's on first? I don't know. Third, third base. base. <laughs> you got an outfield? Oh, yes, yes. The left fielder's name. Why? I don't know. I just thought I'd ask you. <laughs> well, I just thought I'd tell you. All right, then tell me who's playing left field. Who is playing Stay third? Stay out of the infield. Don't mention <laughs> What's on second? I'm not asking you who's on second. Who is on first? I don't know. Third, Third base. Is <laughs> that Field's name? Why? Because. Oh, he's center field. You mean he's field? as well as I do. Look, you got a pitcher on a team? Now, wouldn't this be a fine team without a pitcher? The pitcher's name. Tomorrow. You don't want to tell me today? I'm telling you, man. Then go ahead. Tomorrow. What time? What time what? What time tomorrow are you going to tell me who's pitching? Now, listen, who is not pitching? I'll who break is... your arm, you say, who's on first? Go ahead, have it your arm. What's on second? I don't know. Third base. <laughs> you got a catcher? Oh, absolutely. The catcher's name? Today. Today. And tomorrow's pitch. Now you've got it. Oh, we got us a couple of days on the well, team. I can't help that. You know, I'm a catcher, too. I know that. Now I'll get behind a plate, do some fancy catching. Tomorrow's pitching on my team, and the heavy hitter gets up. Yes. Tomorrow throws the ball, the guy who puts the ball. When he puts the ball, me being a good catcher, I'll throw the guy out of first base. So I pick up the ball and throw it to who? Now that's the first thing you've said right. I don't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's all you have to do. Is to throw the ball at first base? Yes. Now, who's got it? Naturally. <laughs> if I throw the ball at first base, somebody's got to catch it. Now, who caught it? Naturally. <laughs> who caught it? Naturally. Who? Naturally. Naturally. Yes. 
So I pick up the ball and I throw it to Natural. No, no, no. You throw the ball to first base, then who gets it? Naturally. That's right. Now we're talking. So I pick up the ball and I throw it to Natural. You don't. I throw it to who? Naturally. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> You're not saying it that way. I said I throw the ball to naturally. You don't. You throw the ball to who? Naturally. Well, say that. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I throw the ball to who? Naturally. Ask me. You throw the ball to who? Naturally. That's... Same as you. <laughs> I throw the ball to first base, then who gets it? Naturally. Who has it? Naturally. He better have it. <laughs> now, that's it. Now, I throw the ball naturally. Whoever it is drops the ball, so the guy runs to second. Who picks up the ball and throws it to what? What throws it to, I don't know. I don't know, throws it back to tomorrow? Triple play. Yes. Another guy gets up and it's a long fly ball to be called. Why? I don't know. He's on third, and I don't give a darn. <laughs> what was that? I said, I don't give a darn. Oh, that's our shortstop. <laughs> When someone with a secret microphone comes in contact with an unsuspecting individual with human reactions, the result is Candid Microphone, a Thursday night program that's rapidly capturing the interest of ABC listeners everywhere. Candid Microphone is a program that tests people's honest reactions in various situations, and what they say or do is secretly recorded by a man with a concealed mic. For instance, he may ask a strange girl in the park for a date, and when she answers him, she answers candidly, not knowing she's being recorded. Or the man with the mic may record the conversation of a man in a restaurant who suddenly finds he's left his wallet in the proverbial other suit and can't pay his check. But whatever is secretly recorded does not go on the air until the man with the mic has received the full permission of the person or persons recorded. Don't miss Candid Microphone tomorrow night over most of these same ABC stations. Over most of these same ABC stations. Over most of these same ABC stations. <laughs>